Welcome to Electron Line. A few days ago, a viewer asked me about this particular question. I thought it was so interesting that I said, well, why don't I make that into a video? And here it is. The problem reads as follows. What if you have a mass that's attached to a string which is turning in a vertical loop when it's at the very top point right here, the tension in the string equals zero? What will be the tension in the string when it gets to the bottom of the loop? Well, let's try to find that out. First of all, what we're going to do is figure out the velocity at the top based upon the fact that there's no tension in the string right there, which means that the centrifugal force, the, the fictitious force that seems to be pushing the weight outward, equals the force of gravity pulling it downward. So what we can say then is we can say that the force of gravity, mg, must be equal to mv squared over r, and that's to find the v at the top. So we're going to find that first, and we can cancel out the m on both sides, then find the v here, we say v squared is equal to g times r, which means that v is equal to the square root of g times r. That gives us the velocity at the top. Next, we need to find the velocity at the bottom. To do that, we use the energy conservation equation. We can say that the energy at the top must equal the energy at the bottom. The only energy we have at the top would be the potential energy and the kinetic energy. So we can say that the potential energy at the top plus the kinetic energy at the top equals the kinetic energy at the bottom. Presumably, we call this the zero height point. There will therefore not be any potential energy at the bottom. Next, we put in the equations for the potential and kinetic energy. The potential energy at the top would be mgh plus one-half mv at the top squared, and that equals one-half mv at the bottom squared. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for v at the bottom. Okay, uh, again, the mass cancels out everywhere. We don't need to know the mass. And the height would be twice the radius. Notice that the radius of the circle, let's call that r, so the height would be 2r. We call this g times 2r plus 1 half times the velocity at the top, which is equal to the square root of g times r. So the velocity squared at the top, let's just put a v sub t there, means that this is equal to g times r, and that equals 1 half the velocity at the bottom. Next, we'll get rid of those fractions, multiply both sides by 2. That gives us 4gr plus gr equals velocity at the bottom. Combining those two, turning the equation around, the velocity at the bottom is equal to 5gr. Next, we need to find the tension at the bottom. So that's going to be our next step of the process, the final step of the process. And, whoop, T sub B, tension at the bottom. So what we can say here is that we'll have the weight pulling down on it, mg, plus we have the, what we would call the centrifugal force, the fictitious force that seems to push the object to the outside, which is going to be mv squared over r. Remember, that's going to be m at the bottom, or v at the bottom squared over r. So the total tension on the string, the total tension on the string would be the mg plus the mv at the bottom squared over r. Of course, this is the real centripetal force plus the weight of the object, both contributing to the tension on the string. So let's put that over here. The tension on the string is equal to the weight of the object plus the force required to keep the centripetal motion going, mv sub b squared over r. And let's see here. Okay, now v sub b, we have 5gr, so uh, let's see here. I'm forgetting something, that's v sub b squared. I'm forgetting my square. That's why it wasn't working out there for a moment. I forgot to square, but so v sub b squared 5gr, let's put that in here. So the tension of the string is equal to mg plus m times v sub b squared, which would be 5gr divided by, uh, let's see, r right there. And then you can see that the r's cancel. And then we have mg plus 5mg, Therefore, the tension at the bottom is equal to six times the weight of the object. And that's the answer. Amazingly enough, that's the true answer. So going back and see how we did that. First, we want to find the velocity at the top. 
by setting the weight equal to the centrifugal force or making the weight equal to the centripetal force. We can then see that V squared equals GR or V, or v is equal to the square root of GR. Then we use the energy equation to find the velocity at the bottom. So the energy at the top equals the energy at the bottom. When we plug the right values in, we get VB squared equals 5GR. Forgot the square there. And then finally, the tension at the bottom is simply going to be equal to the weight plus the force required for the centripetal motion. And so we add those two together. We replace VB for what VB is equal to, 5GR, or should I say VB squared. And then we simplify that. The tension at the bottom equals five times the weight. And that's how it's done. Welcome to Electron Line. A few days ago, a viewer... Oh, man. Let's start this up again. All right. Welcome to Electron Line. A few days ago, 